when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created me and you as babies, when the baby come out from, from the mother's womb, right? What does the baby know? Fitbar, exactly. The intuition, right? Instinct, natural instinct. And what is that? That I know, he knows, she knows, this baby, you know, this just came out, they have a creator. Have a creator. Because everyone else on this life, on this earth, know there is a creator, but they call it differently. Mother Nature, oh my gosh, why do they say oh my gosh? Right? Oh my God, what is that? Because we know there is a bigger power than you and me. Superpower, Mother Nature, they call it what they want to call it. That's what the baby comes in. When I and you were created, we know there is a creator. And we all do. When we get in trouble, when we are in need, what do we do? Ya Allah, please, for us Muslims. Why? Because I know he's there. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he brought that human being to this earth, made, should be, again, he made it, but then we changed. That this human being, this small baby, this man, this woman, young and old, is exactly in harmony with everything else around me. This whole earth, is a complete harmony. What they say these days, we ruined it. What did we do? What did we do? When we chop a tree, what did we do? When we cut a tree, what did we do? We broke the harmony that Allah made it. There is a reason why there is a lizard, and there's a reason why there is a lion, and there's a reason why there is this tree, and there's a reason why you and me, and we are all in harmony, should be. But what happens as we grow older, all of us, it depends where are we growing, what is the environment, we start changing. I'll give you a simple example, and hopefully this will make it clearer. This is true example in my office 20 years ago. When I was in St. Louis, after September 11, we had an influx of refugees, and the refugees came from Afghanistan. And I remember very well, the mother brought a 12 or a 13-year-old young girl. Literally, you want to use the word angel? That was the girl. Full of haya, beautiful dress. She doesn't look at me. The way she sits, you know what I'm saying? Then this girl came three years later. Lived in this society. Changed. Changed. And you all know this. So this is what it is. It's as I am growing, where I am, number one is the house, and then it gets the school, and then the society, I change. And it depends, what is this change? Is gonna be me, right? We all say back home, when we were growing up, this will never happen, why? Society. So what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and I'm gonna share this with you, and Allah says, Alam tara. Don't you see? And this is in Surah Al-Hajj. Alam tara anna Allah yusabbihu lahu ma fi sawamawati wa ma fi al-ard wa al-shams wa al-qamar wa al-nujum wa al-jibal wa al-nujum wa al-dawab wa kathir min al-nas wa kathir al-haqqa alayhi al-adhab. Don't you see? And when Allah tells you don't you see meaning, you should see. You literally meaning in our daily talk, what is wrong with you? Why you're not seeing it? Don't you see, and Allah now enumerates his creation. Alam tara, don't you see, that the following glorify Allah. We said the shams, sun, the moon, al-qamar, wal-najum, the stars, the mountains, wal-jibal, wal-dawab, all the animals that walks in a different way. And he didn't say people, he said, wa kathirun min al-nas. A good number of people, but not all of them. This is what we are. We are supposed to be, again, in harmony. Everything around me should, and I'm, I keep gonna say should, because it's not the reality, unfortunately. Everything around me should remind me of Allah. Even the disasters, even things that is not the pleasant things, even what I see what is happening in Gaza, it's a reminder. Allah, creation, Allah, power, Allah's will, Allah's rahmah. So tazkiyah, tazkiyah, purification, as I grow up, 
as I come in contact with what is around me, and I change, and some human beings get completely corrupted, Teskia comes in and brings you back and me to where Allah wants me to be. Without it, it's very difficult. You, you see people memorize Quran, but they are not Muzakim. They are not. You see people who have, have PhDs in Islamic studies, but they are not. And you see people don't have that, but they are, because they know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the goal, the goal is I move in my life, and my life continue the norm, and I see everything through the lens of Allah. And I want you to remember this. I use this all the time. All of you students in the Y, okay, know this. In the lens of Allah. You are here because Allah brought you. But we never think of it this way. And those who were planning, but they didn't make it, not because they were this or that. Allah did not bring them. In Tazkiyah, as I'm giving you the introduction, the I word that everybody brag about these days, none existing. There is nothing, it's called I. I did not deliver a baby. Allah made me deliver a baby. You did not get pregnant. Allah made you pregnant. I didn't help you. Allah brought me to help you. Did you see the difference? The goal, the aim, you know you are in the process of tazkiyah when you become the true servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the real abd of Allah. Not we all say we are ibadullah, but are we really in the word that it means? Tazkiyah will make you this way. The lens becomes clearer and clearer and clearer. And getting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in dunya let alone in akhirah is by this process. How many of you, and let me ask you this question, how many of you say, I have a pure heart? How many of you say, I have absolutely no pure heart? So we are in between. It's a scale. The pure heart, and I'll come to it, what it means, and I'll give you some outline. The pure heart is Sayyidina Ibrahim. You want to know who, what I should be? Or at least what I am aiming to, I am not Sayyidina Ibrahim, we're not prophets, but what I am aiming to is Sayyidina Ibrahim. When Allah says to him, whatever it is, is yes, I'm going to do it. The corrupted, completely dead is who? Fir'aun, for example. Right? Ana Rabbukum al I am your biggest Lord. That's a huge problem. He did not see Allah. Right? قال يا همان ابن لي صرحا لعلي أبلغ الأسباب أسباب السماوات فأطلع إلى إله موسى هي هارون my assistant come come look the way come build for me stairs right let me go up and see what is this that they are talking about إله موسى I want to see who is that maybe I will know him complete arrogance that's dead and that's why Allah سبحانه وتعالى made him drown we are in between Let's all agree, we're not. You, you, nobody should say I have a dead heart, because you will not be here. You're not a Muslim if you have a dead heart. Alhamdulillah. But I cannot claim, I'm talking about myself, I have a pure heart. I hope, I want, I'm working on it, I fear, but I'm going to get up. In between, where are you? The best example, look at yourself in Ramadan. The same place, the same masjid, the same you. Nothing changed in Ramadan, especially for us living in the West. You, and then the day before Ramadan, and the day of Eid. If you pay attention to your heart, if I have the EKG that we use, I will see how it changes. So my goal is to be the person who I am in Ramadan, the best of me in Ramadan, to continue. And the work is on the nafs, is not on the body. It's exactly the same way when you want to lose weight. What do you do? What do you do? How easy or difficult? Very difficult. What do you do? To and? Exercise. Do you like it? Do you hate it? Absolutely. Right? But many people do it because they love the result. If I really, really want to come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a pure success, 
100%. As Sayyidina Ibrahim said, إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ وَلَا تُخْزِنِي يَوْمَ يُبْعَثُونَ This is a beautiful verse, Surah Al-Shu'ara, the poets. He was talking to Allah. This is Sayyidina Ibrahim. He said, Ya Allah, please, don't disgrace me on the day of resurrection. Do we all in this room believe that we're going to meet Allah? Do you have any doubt? Alhamdulillah. So we have this, we're going to have it sooner or later. وَلَا تُخْزِنِي يَوْمَ يُبْعَثُونَ Don't disgrace me on the day of resurrection. Number two. Listen to this, memorize this, because this is extremely important in your process of tazkiyah. يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَا بَنُونَ The day where nothing, or the day where neither children nor wealth, money, will be, will come to my rescue, will be beneficial. Look at your life and mine and ours. The focus is on what? Dunya. And what is dunya? What is, are we focusing about? Look at from children. And what do you focus on the children? There's nothing wrong with focusing on the children. They are amana. I have to do it. But what do I focus on? We really have, the, the, I'm going to spend most of the time, especially in the first part, on all of us accepting reality. If I don't know what is wrong with me, this is what I tell my patients. I'm a physician. If I don't know what's wrong with you, I can't help you. True or false? If you keep telling me all the stories, I'll like, please forgive me. But what is the issue? What is the problem? So what is the problem for us as a human being, and again for us as Muslims, is I focus on dunya. Alhamdulillah, there's nothing wrong with that. Without dunya, I'm not going to get to akhirah. True? Don't you say, I don't want this dunya, because then how are you going to get to jannah? But the problem is that what I focus in this dunya, is it, and I'm going to put a question mark, you say it, is it getting me to akhirah, to the place where I want to be in akhirah? And he said it clearly, the day where the children and money will not come to my rescue. What does it mean? When I spend in 24 hours a day, I spend, let's say, 16 hours of my day Focusing on what he said, of course it's Allah's words, will not come to my benefit. How smart I am. 16th hour of the day, I'm just giving a number, right? Could be less, but do I spend at least 10 hours a day focusing on my children and wealth? And wealth means job and everything? Yes or no? Yes or no? So, but you're gonna, I'm sure all of you are asking this question. But then, how am I gonna live? Oh, well, he gave me the children, he's gonna ask me about them. True or false? And everybody is gonna, you memorize this word 100%. Well, amal is ibadah, right? Working is an act of worship. I have not heard any statement more frequent than this. Because it comes on my nafs, justify it. Absolutely true, but what am I doing? What kind of a job? Am I disobeying Allah in this job? Is the job bringing me closer to Allah? What I'm doing with the money that's coming from the job? Now my children, what I'm doing about my children? Right? I'm gonna give you an example, which is I lived it with all, the, all these years talking to people. You have children. The child, young, a boy or a girl, doesn't matter did not wake up for Fajr, okay? And the child come from home or school or university, whatever they are, and they have failed. The report card, F. What is your reaction as parents? What's your reaction? Right, why did you fail? And it's the end of the world. True or false? And list off? Punishments, what I'm going to do, let's get a plan. My son, my daughter will not go to college. My son, my daughter will not graduate. Don't you hear that? And even me, like a student, I feel very down. It's a failure, true or false. What happens when the child doesn't wake up for Fajr? Allah is ghafoor rahim He's tired. You know, they, they studied very hard. Because the focus is 
this is what he was saying. When that child is taking me away from Allah, let alone make me justify the disobey of Allah, that's what he said. But if my son or your children is the son of Sayyidina Ibrahim Ismail, no, I want 12, if not 24. Did you get the point? Because balance is very important in Tazkiyah. It's not an extreme. It's not, you know what, I want to go to Jannah, I'm not going to do anything in this life. No, who's going to take care of this earth? So here you go, the focus is on what will bring me fruits at the end. The focus is on my akhirah. I'm going to live my dunya, enjoy my dunya, do everything, but with the goal of akhirah. Meaning, when you go to school, again, alhamdulillah, we have a good number of youth here. When you go to college, is it always boring? Is it always studying? No, you still have some fun when we work all the time. But there is also times of joy, right? That's how life should be. Time of joy is not all boring, is not all not pleasant, but the goal, the focus. So focus on that human being, and this is very good for everybody. My nafs inside me. Allah created it, that I love Allah. I know he's there. I want to obey him, but I get distracted. And I keep, distract, that I keep allowing the distraction to distract me till my heart become dead. When the heart dead, I don't feel it. Are you all with me so far? Is that easy? No, I can see it in your faces. It is not. But the result is beautiful. It's not. It's a struggle. Because you're going to go against a lot of the things most people are doing. And let alone you like it. There's two obstacles. In fact, there's three obstacles. One is me. And one is people. And the third one is shaitan. And shaitan usually play on these two. Like, for example, you have an exam tomorrow, and you love games. You're, you're, you're playing games because you like it, you enjoy it, but it's not going to do good. I need to go against my nerves, stop playing, put it away, we'll play after the exam. That's me and you. So the first thing you have to all analyze, and Tuskia is all about contemplation. You really have to start thinking. This rat race we all are living in, alhamdulillah. But also the rat race, I need to take a time off. When I go for vacation, I'm not going to feed more my nafs and shaitan. The vacation should be time for me to reflect. If I ask a question for everybody here, where are we going? To the grave. Right? For sure. Somebody was asking me the other day, about celebrating birthdays. And I'm not going to get into it, but I said, I want you to think one thing. Everybody. I'm not talking about a five and a six-year-old. It's a different story. I'm talking about us other. What, what are we celebrating? One year closer to my birth. When I reflect on it. If you are looking at a cake and a gathering, that's the external, that's happy, that's beauty. That's exactly what we are doing in this life. We look at the external, it's beautiful, I like it, but reality, I am not paying attention. Tazkiya makes you start thinking differently. As we say in this, in, this, in this country, what do we say? I start thinking outside the box. And that's why in the beginning, you're very different from everybody. Because everybody doesn't do that. I wouldn't say everybody, but I will say most of the people. So now let's come to and say, what heart I have? So I'm just giving you an outline today, inshallah. Let's come to the hearts. What kind of hearts we have? In the, it's in the Quran. I'm not giving you anything outside the Quran or the Sunnah. How many types of, the, of hearts we have? I'm talking about spiritual one. I'm not talking about the one pumping. We all have this pumping heart. Talk to cardiologists. So there's a three kinds of hearts, at least in the Quran. There is more. But in the Quran, there is three. First one, the best, the good, the goal, al qalbu salim The sound heart. Pure heart. That's the goal. So the true heart. So al qalbu salim Just, just, 
know these names? I'll give you some out, yani, uh, some symptoms of each, and then you go home and start thinking of it. Second one, the complete opposite, the result of it, dead heart, qalbul mayyid, dead. In between, sick. Naam, fi qulubihim maradun, fazadahum allahu marada. Their heart has sickness, Allah made it even more sick. Are you all with me? So dead, three, easy, simple. Dead, sick, and sound. Let's start with the heart of the right Sound, sound, healthy, healthy. Like in medicine, honestly, this is how you understand things, very simple. What is a healthy heart uh, medically, not spiritually? Medically, when I say, I'm healthy, what is the heart is doing? Doing its job. What is the job? Pumping in a certain numbers, pushing the blood, healthy blood from the right place, going to the rest of my body. What is the qalb is salim? Sound, healthy heart, spiritually. Salima min kulli shahwatin tukhalifu amr Allah wa nahiya. Wa min kulli shubhatin this is basically it. My heart and yours, and Ya Rabbi Ameen, and say Ameen, and really make it your goal. Don't give up on yourself. Don't say, I can't do it. No, Allah is capable. He can. The one who brought you here, the one who introduced you to Islam, the real one, the real one to learn, he's able. So there's two things this heart absolutely doesn't have. Salima, Salima meaning completely free of. Number one, that heart is free of any desire, any desire that is against what Allah wants. Not few, hadamafi, this is pure. It's salima, it's absolutely free from any desire that is not what pleases Allah. Is that clear? Now let's translate, what does that mean? Reality in my daily life. What does it mean? What is a desire that please Allah and a desire that displease Allah? Try to not only focus on salah or dhikr because I want reality. I want in my daily life. Right? You go to work. Right? You go to school. You're married. Dealing with your husband, with your children. What does it mean? Every desire that is not pleasing to Allah. So I am... I am cooking for my children, or I am working double two jobs because I want my children not to need anybody. Is that haram? The job is absolutely halal, right? And I'm cooking all is halal. Is that, is that wrong? Absolutely not, right? Ah, now the word, why you are doing it? The answer was, I'm doing it for Allah. Don't we all say this? I'll give you an example that's gonna make it very clear, bi'idnillah. Why you are here for Allah, right? Yes or no? Why I'm here for Allah? I just claimed it, right? Perfect. You all came, stayed here. I didn't show up. What is going to happen? Are you going to get upset? Why did you get upset? She wasted my time. Why didn't they tell us? Why didn't, right? That's not pleasing to Allah. You came to learn, true? And you're learning something pleasing to him. Will he reward you? Will he reward you? I want to hear it. Yes. Then why did you get upset? So you cook for your children, exactly the same. Same thing with the, I work very hard for my children. Right? Alhamdulillah, what is wrong with that? But what is my expectation? Working two jobs, very long hours, and then one day you look at your child and you say, do you know how hard I worked? So you go to college, you didn't do it for Allah. Your niya should be, so this child will be Allah pleasing servant. Or even harder, because he is a man, I trust Allah put it with me and he's gonna ask me about it. Did you see, did you see the lens, all of you? Yes or no? Yeah, but you're finding this very difficult. Well, it's reality. That's what needs to change. 
Shahwa is when I like something. So anything you say, I love it, I like it. Human being, food, dress, place, vacation, doesn't matter. The first question should be, if I want to be an Albu Salim, what is the first question should be? Is it pleasing to Allah? You shouldn't say, I, why you're doing it because I love it. But that's not pleasing to Allah or is it pleasing to Allah? And if it is pleasing to Allah, you, put, you didn't put it as number one. The near, the intention. Then I'm not going to get reward. Are you all with me? This needs to change everything I do. I shouldn't do it because I love. Or I shouldn't not do it because I hate it. These two are not for Allah. Khali, salam, no shahwa. If I am drinking, let's say, coffee, coffee or a tea, what is wrong with coffee or tea? Nothing. Halal. I'm buying it. The money is mine. The money is halal. Right? But did I ask myself, is this is a desire that pleasing Allah? I'm taking you very deep because you really, the evening now, after today, you're going to start analyzing everything you do. That's the first step. So when you want to go and buy a coffee, a donut, you're going to go and have the uh, lunch. Why? Well, I'm hungry. Okay. I love it. Is it pleasing to Allah? The question has always to come. As you're going to go, many times you find it overwhelming, difficult, but wait, wait, wait. He's going to give you the answer. Wallahi, he's going to give you the answer. And I said, Wallahi, in his name, in his house. When you are sincere and you really want to know the answer, he's going to give it to you. But if you are just going to do it by the way, so every desire, you know what I say to my patients, sometimes they really look at me. The patient comes and she doesn't have children. And this is very challenging. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never let you go through this test. And the first question, these are the people I know, and they know me. And I say, why do you want to have children? I'm trying to move their niya. I'm trying to make them think of the niya. And what is the usual question, I answers I get? You tell me, parents, because this usually couple comes. Why do you want to have child? What is the usual number one answer? I love children. Some says, why did I get married then? Honestly, right? So when I grow up, they will take care of me. Well, it's the beauty of this life. Is this haram? No. Is this, is this pleasing to Allah? As long as you make the intention. You put Allah in there. I want to have children. So when I am in front of Allah, I said, Ya, ya Allah, you wanted us to have more Muslims on this earth to worship you. So I tried my, even if the children, may Allah protect your children. Even if the children did not come out the way you wanted, but you tried and you put it. Shahwa, desire. Everything you put in your mouth. And I'm, I'm saying everything in the beginning is not going to be everything. But as you go through this process, it becomes everything, believe me. Why you are doing what you are. Every shahwa, every day. Why do you want to get married? Why do you want to go to this school or not that school? Why this profession, not that profession? Learn to know why and how. Why will bring the niya in your life? Will bring, one of the first things I learned, I remember it's probably six months after this was introduced. Of course, most of, many of you, you will, probably feel this, I wanted to stop doing medicine and I wanted to only do Islamic studies because I felt it's a waste of time, like now many of you are thinking of. And the answer was no. Nothing about your serving people, none, no, because this is all shahwa. The question was, the answer was, you say to Allah before you open the door for physicians in this room, before you open the door to see the patient, you say, Ya Allah, this is for you. If the patient thanked you, it doesn't matter. And if the patient went out and sued you, it doesn't matter. You did it for Allah. Changed it completely. And continued to practice in medicine. So every desire inside you, I want to go to a concert. Why? I like it. All my friends are going. 
Is that pleasing to Allah? Don't wait for your parents to say it or to your husband tell you or your wife tell you. The answer is clear. Is that pleasing to Allah? Yes or no? Why not? Why haram? Allah, please, don't throw the word haram. <laughs> ya Allah. Why? What's this pleasing thing? This is what I need you. Because you have to be convinced. It's not orders. That's why people are not practicing the right way. Everything is haram. Everything we're going to go to Jahannam. مَا يَفْعَلُ اللَّهُ بِعَذَابِكُمْ بِكُمْ إِنْ شَكَرْتُمْ وَأَمَنْتُمْ What will Allah gain from punishing you? As a verse in the Quran, so what we say, if you only believe and be grateful. What is wrong with going to a concert? That's how you have to talk to your children also, or to your spouse. What is wrong with going to a concert? I didn't say it's okay or not. I'm asking you the question. Does it make you forget Allah? I, I'm sorry? It will make you forget Allah. I am going to answer. Well, when you are working, you are remembering Allah all the time. It's what's going on in the concert. Simple one. Simple one. Again, remember the lens. Remember the lens. When Allah is looking at you, or me, in that concert, is he happy with my presence? I want to hear it. No. no. Done. Then you decide. This is how I say to myself. Then you decide. No need for arguments. Obviously. What is taqwa? One of the names of taqwa, one of the definitions of taqwa, taqwa, is not Allah fear. Whoever tells you it's Allah fear, I'm sorry. Taqwa is, he finds you where he wants you to be and does not find you where he doesn't want you to be. Or the other definition, the opposite is, he doesn't miss you. I love this one because that's love. He doesn't miss you where he wants you to be. And he doesn't find you where he doesn't want you to be. That's the answer. Is it clear now? Desires. It's not all desires are haram. How do you have children if you don't have the desire? And you will be rewarded. That's a hadith of Rasulullah. He said, you put the... the, the Piece of like um, a piece of food in your wife's mouth, you will get reward. And to the Sahaba, and this is a Rasulullah He was saying that you fulfill your desire in a halal relationship, you will get rewarded. And they said, Ya Rasulullah, Sahaba, Ya Rasulullah, we are fulfilling our desires, and we will get rewarded. He said, Yes, look at that. Because if you, if he or she had fulfilled it in the haram way, will Allah take them accountable? They said yes. He said, now when you do it in the halal way, Allah will reward you. Is that clear? So shahwa desires, and each one of you in this room, define what is desire for you. Your desire may be not mine, and my desire may be not yours. Some people love chocolate. Some people hate chocolate. Some people like ice cream. These are all desires. I give food because that's a daily common thing. The way we dress, men and women, it's a desire. I want to be like everybody. I want to be beautiful. I want people to praise me. True or false? That's desire. When I'm in front of the mirror, dressed, ready to leave, one question. Don't wait for anyone to ask you anything. You ask. Talk to him. Is that okay, Allah? And you will hear the answer. Follow. Did you see the qalb al-salim? Nothing in it. That's the goal. That's A plus. That's Nobel Prize. Nothing in that heart. But what pleases Allah is what you said. But and I want it in a daily life. Daily life. When I am in this masjid upstairs or I am here, and the adhan went on, what does he want me to do? No, not yet. Adam. Adam is going on. What does he want me to do? Listen to the Adam and say after the Mu'addin. You all know that. Anybody doesn't know this in this room? Why I don't do it? What I normally do? Either I'm talking or I'm looking at my phone. That's my desire. Is that desire pleasing to Allah? Done. I think this is very clear now. Yes? 
Alhamdulillah. Now the second one, that heart, Salim, perfect, is free of, now this is much more harder, because this is usually the problem of the educated people. Free of any thoughts. Now remember any. Any thoughts that is not pleasing to Allah. Or any thoughts, look at this one, contradict his orders. Who can give me a very common example? And we argue about it. Or anything comes to your mind. Anybody. Hijab. Absolutely. One of the most common ones. Right? What do they what do you what what comes here? It's thoughts. So now we thought desires, now it's thoughts. I'm thinking. What do we say? The common one. It is not an obligation. It's a thought. And some people say it to me as like, hmm, you know what? This could be true. Now I'm entertaining the thought. The thought is not pleasing to Allah. Because the end of the thought, I will end up not doing what he wants me to do. What do I do? Any thought, not only hijab, any thoughts that come to me, that I like it. Now, now are you with me? Now my desire is going to work on my thoughts to make them go together. What we call it, justify it. Justify. Are you, are you all with me? Justify it. For example, a child or a son or a daughter, right? Respond very unpleasant to the parents. Or a husband doesn't treat the wife at that moment, say things is not pleasing to Allah, or vice versa. What do we say? When you, when let's say your friend come and talk to you, or your friend, what do you, they usually say, the person who did it, what do they say? I was upset. You don't know what they said. How can I even take this? Now these are thoughts. Are these thoughts pleasing to Allah? Did he tell me when you get upset, respond, and respond harsh? Then that thought is not pleasing to Allah. Are you all with me? This is getting more difficult. Why it's more difficult? Because the result is al qalb salim the pure. The result is a direct flight to Jannah. There is no questions. Because I already questioned myself in every act in this dunya. He's not going to ask, uh, ask me. As Sayyidina Umar said, حَاسِبُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ قَبْلَ أَن تُحَاسَبُوا وَزِنُوا أَعْمَالَكُمْ قَبْلَ أَن تُوزَنُوا أو تُوزَنُوا وَأُسْتَعِدُوا وَتَهِيَّئُوا Take yourself accountable before you will ta be taken accountable. And weigh your deeds before it will be weighed. And beautify yourself for the day of the beautiful exhibition. What that day is day of judgment. So thoughts, most of the time, they work together on my nafs. I want to, let's say fasting, Monday. And Thursdays, for example, right? And your friend calls you. I said, hey, how about we fast Monday? Short days, you know, Maghrib is what? 4.30, 4.45, as if we skipped lunch and at work. What do you know? answer? Now, now, thoughts. What is the answer? Coffee. Exactly. Ah. Oh. If I don't, don't take my coffee at 10 o'clock or 9, whatever, I get really bad headache and I cannot function. True? Then your friend is a good one, or, the, or sometimes the friend is the dialogue inside you. There is a huge dialogue. Something inside you says, so what did you do in Ramadan? 30 days you fasted. A sound inside you, oh, that was Ramadan. So thoughts. I will say, free of any thoughts or desire that not pleases Allah. At least the step to start, and this is what I will say, because some of you, maybe this is the first time you've been even exposed to this, alhamdulillah. The first thing is, start analyzing. You feel, don't you think today you learn this, tomorrow you are a qalb salim I wish. But you, it's okay, you feel is okay. At least you know you failed. Because if I don't know I'm fail, I failed, and I think I'm okay, then what is it? I will never change. So here you go. Thought, 
and desire. Three, now coming to feelings. Coming to feelings. And I'll ask everybody in this room, have you ever had a love feeling toward any human being? Yes or no? Absolutely. Parents, siblings, spouses, someone you want to marry, or someone you're going to get married, or somebody you are engaged to. There's nothing haram with that. I'm talking about feelings. I didn't talk about actions. The qalb the, the pure heart, the true heart. All the emotions, whether it is upset, anger, whether it is love, all channeled toward what pleases them. The most famous thing they said, we have not seen Rasul get upset. This is from the Sahaba, except. So he did get upset. When? When? When Allah's boundaries were broken. When it is Maharumillah. Give you an example, Maharumillah. If you go at that point, you will say, Ya Allah, you're the only one. Maharumillah. If you see someone walking in the street, I don't know Muslim or non-Muslim, doesn't matter. But that person, he or she, dressed inappropriate, acting inappropriate. If you don't have a feeling inside you, not I'm not talking about external, I'm talking inside, that you are upset. Ya Allah, why? Especially if you know they are Muslim. Ya Allah, why you are being disobeyed? You feel it. That's for Allah. When you get upset more because someone did this to you or didn't do this to you or violated your right and you don't get upset when Allah's rights are violated, that's the problem. Is this clear for everybody? So long. Feelings. The qalb is because where is the feelings here? We don't know where is here, but that's what we say. The feelings has to be channeled. To Allah. Meaning, when you forgive somebody, why do you forgive someone? Why? Most of the time, why do we forgive people? Because we love them. Right? Yes? That's not for Allah. I should forgive them. Why? Forgive and pardon. Don't you want Allah to forgive you? That's verse of Surah to nur are you all with me? So even the good deeds, the feelings, I am doing the act, has to be channeled toward Allah. That's why I said, let's move out from good deeds only, fasting or praying or reading Quran. What about the others? What about the person who cannot read? How about the person who's crippled and baby can pray, can't stand in Taraweeh for three, four hours? So, qalb is feelings. So you have your desires, you have your thoughts, you have your feelings, and you are. Let me ask you this, have you ever seen, some of you maybe, when you go back home and you have people who serve you, right? Alhamdulillah, this is a ni'mah from Allah. The young people, they don't know what this means. When we have a servant that whatever you tell, they do to you, I can't tell you what a ni'mah is this, right? Do these people argue with you? And if you argue, they argue, what do you do? Let them go. Right? You're, you're here to obey me. That's abd. That's the slave. That's how we are with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah said so? Naam. Sami'na wa ata'na. That's the end of Surah Al-Baqarah. After all, by the way, Surah Al-Baqarah has all the rulings that Allah wants me to do. From Salah to Siyam to Hajj to Zakah to all, 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 all in Surah Al-Baqarah. At the end of it, وَقَالُوا سَمِعْنَا وَأَطَعْنَا They said, we hear and we obey. So here I am, هذا القلب السليم. Now how many of you can say, my قلب is سليم 10%, 20%. Not zero, no way it's zero. It's not dead. I, I keep reminding you, no way. Zero is dead. Now let's come to the dead heart. And this is a hadith, a beautiful hadith of Rasulullah And basically, He's, he or the signs of it. Everything you like, you will do. 
واقف مع شهواته او افري ديزاير يو وونت يور دو يو دونت هاف ذس فلتر وات از ذا فلتر از ذات بليزنج تو الله They don't go through this filter. You know when you wash fruits, vegetables, you know, you put in the strainer, why? Because you want to filter things that is not healthy. Okay. So the, 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 the sick heart, not yet the dead, the sick heart knows, knows, that's the difference between the sick and the dead. The sick knows that what he or she is doing is not pleasing to Allah, but I like it. I do it. Everyone else. Allah is all forgiving. Just one thing. Just this thing. That's a sick heart. One. Second, which I doubt, inshallah, none of you here. I don't care if Allah is pleased with me or not. La ilbari. I rely a lot on Allah's forgiveness. And I always say this to myself. Well, Allah is for sure for the Rahim. All forgiving or pardoning. But Allah also should you do like huh? that severe punishment. What will I do with that? So that's number two. Obey everything other than Allah. Everyone in the school is doing this, I'm doing it. Everyone, all my friends are doing this, I'm doing it. Nobody is doing it, I'm not doing it. Why? I don't want to be different. I want to be like everybody else. A servant other than of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the dead. That's the dead one. Dead one. The sick one. Between these two. Sometimes I'm more pure, or sometimes I am more sick, or most of the time are in between. I'll give you an example. This is a very common example. When Salat al Fajr comes at 4 a.m., now Alhamdulillah, now it's a piece of cake, right? Most of us are awake before that long because, you know, we have to do this and that. But when the fajr becomes 4 a.m., when you put the alarm, what happens? And you went to bed like 11 or 12, what happens usually? You put the alarm and the alarm went on. What usually happens? I call it the dialogue. I call it the fajr dialogue. That's me. What is the fajr dialogue? Two more minutes. Five. Allah, I'm so tired. And I just can't. You want to be pleased. True or false? And back and forth. And then something inside you is going to say, come on, just get up, do, 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 quickly come back to sleep. Don't you hear this? You, you, I'm not talking about somebody is telling you. It's you. That's the qalb al-maleel. Fihi maddatan, as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, it has two forces. Our malakatan, malakat, lammatan, lammatul malik wa lammatul shaytan. Has two forces, one from the angel and one from the shaytan. And they are fighting. Think of this every time. You want to do something. And this something for sure is not pleasing to Allah. Or for sure is pleasing to Allah. And you want to do this and you don't want to do this. There is this inside you. Don't say this word. Don't. But she upset me. But she deserved it. Did you see this? That said, you have a sick heart. At least not dead. They're definitely not dead because they are fighting. But if you're going to keep not treating the sick heart, we will end up with dead one. Exactly. We will end up with dead one. Rasul gave us four types of hearts. Four. One is qalbun ajal. This is a beautiful hadith. They say it's either a hadith of Rasulullah sallam or it is a saying to Hudayf ibn yaman which is a, a, a sahabi, a companion. He said, al qulubu arba'a. Hearts are four kinds. Now he give you four. Let's say this with Qalbun ajal. Bold, barren, free, empty. Which one is this one? Qalbu sareen. There's nothing in it because now he he's saying it is mutajarrid min masiwa Allah. Nothing in it except what Allah, which we said, meaning everything I do is pleasing to Allah, every feeling channeled toward Allah. That's the first one. Second one, qalbun aghlaf, a heart that is completely covered, enclosed. No truth goes into it. 
Which, which one is this? That, that nothing. I, somebody comes to me and say, come on, you can't say this word. It's not pleasing to Allah. I don't even hear it. No, it doesn't even go. Not like it goes and you're thinking, why did I say nothing? What is wrong with it? Please don't, I don't want to hear lectures. Dead. I'm giving you all examples. I'm sure you all have heard it. You've been in it, or you've, or you've been the person who's giving the advice. Third one, Qalbul Munafiq. This is the addition in the hadith. The heart of the hypocrite. And I'm not talking about hypocrite in belief. Hypocrite in practice. Knows and reject. May Allah protect us all. Knows and reject. You know this is not right. And you were doing it. I'm sorry, you know this is right. And you were doing it. And then you changed. And, and you always have to ask yourself, why did I change? Why? I had this discussion with somebody one time. And they were telling me they always were in Fajr in the Masjid. And then they disappeared. And I said, what happened? I, I, I said, I'm going to ask this question. It's going to be a tough one. But think of it. Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't want to see you in the first row in Fajr? What happened? Who, who moved you out from Fajr? Because Fajr is one of the hard, hardest ones on everybody, let alone in the masjid. And the answer was, at least they were truthful. The answer was one word, dunya. That's what I heard. So you did, I did, and then I changed. That's why the most, one of the most frequent dua of Rasulullah SAW was, Ya muqallib al-qulub, thabbit qalbi alayhik. The one who change hearts, keep my heart steadfast. Don't you be lured. That oh, alhamdulillah, look at me, here I am, memorize Quran, I do this. Don't you don't know? Nobody is saved. Nobody is saved. That's why you keep asking Allah to keep you on the straight path. The fourth one is the sick one that I just shared with you. It has two two forces. One goes this one and one goes this one. The signs that your heart is pure. Now I'm going to give you, and you grade yourself. Imam Ibn Qayyim put a 12, and here I think I'm going to give you only nine. Pure heart. If you have this, you have a pure heart. I, I don't care what people think of me. If I have this, then I say to people, you don't know me. He knows. Number one, he or she, that person, that you have a pure heart. The true heart, the subject. That person lives in this dunya as if they are living in akhirah. Lives in this dunya as if they are living in akhirah, as if he is in Jannah. And I'm sure you're thinking, so how I'm going to live here? This is exactly what he's saying. Takes from dunya what he or she needs. And the focus is, have you seen this example recently? Gaza. In case you wonder, how can this woman, how can this woman or that man, when he looked and he sees his three children and says, make sure you send salam to Rasulullah Haven't you seen that one? SubhanAllah, he's crying. Human being, feelings, normal. But the focus? al -akhir. I just saw an interview. There was one man who was assassinated very recently. And they brought his uh, interview not that long. You know what he said? He said, I lived all my life to be a martyr. I'm so surprised I'm even that age now. He was assassinated. dunya. The reason we are finding this difficult or it's hard for us to practice because we're focusing on it. The answer I just told you, I heard from that person. It's the dunya. 
meaning, practically. When you put your to-do list, or what I'm going to do today, what I'm going to do tomorrow, ask yourself one, one question. Put it in that list. Where is Allah? And where is the Akhirah in here? Take care of your children, take care of your beauty, take care of your home, or do your job, everything. But don't forget, this all should come into my rescue on the Day of Judgment. I chose this job not because I love it. I chose this job, Ya Allah, because you love it. I let go of this job or of this thing, whatever is this thing is, not because I don't like it or I can't get it, but because it's not pleasing to Allah. Are you all with me? Yartah al dunya. Don't make this dunya is your focus. Because I will be pulled out and away from Allah. So yartahil an dunya. As the Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam said this to say to Abdullah ibn Umar, the son of Umar, radiallahu anhu. He said, Kun fi dunya, write that down. Kun fi dunya ka'ina kawarib awa habar sabir. Live in this life as if you are a stranger or you are a passing by traveler. You live, let's say, in Hawaii. And your plane, you were for work or job or visiting, right? Coming from the East Coast, and your plane landed in California. And you have a six hours layover. This is our daily life, right? Do you build a house in California? Do you focus all the time on what I'm going to do in California? No. Right? No. My house is Hawaii. That's where I live. That's where I'm going. This is what he meant. You are a stranger or a traveler. Don't focus on here. Because you're going to leave it sooner or later. How many times in this week, just think of this, how many news of people died you have heard? Young and old and everything. Right? SubhanAllah, my friend, she sent me a picture and says, Ah, oh, that's my relative. I said, MashaAllah. He said, Oh, he just died. Sitting all together at dinner, right? Healthy, joking, talking like everybody. Guess what happened? He choked and died in front of his family. SubhanAllah. Here you are. I don't want you to get depressed, but I want us all, this is what Tazkiya does, bring balance. Bring balance between this life and the hereafter. I'm not staying here forever. Live as if you are a traveler, stranger. When you pack to travel, always think of this. When we pack, actually we're not going to pack. Someone will pack for us. What do they put with us when we travel, when we go? Nothing. Number two, that your heart is sound. This is going to make you feel very good, honestly. When you are sinning, you just committed a sin. You just disobeyed Allah. The heart will keep reminding you, making you feel guilty. And keep nagging till you change. That's the difference between the sick and the, and the uh, pure. You're going to feel so bad. You know when you hurt someone you love and you feel so bad? I did I see this? That's when it is when you disobey your love. The heart will keep reminding you, reminding you that you've done it. Don't despair, but go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then you have a sound heart. You don't accept sins, let alone justify sins, let alone keep doing it. So that's number two. Number three. Uh, when we miss Fajr, and I keep reminding, talking about Fajr, because it's the hardest one on everybody. What happens when you wake up? How many of you feel bad? Al-Qalbu Salim. So if I don't feel bad, ya wayli. I felt bad. Al-Qalbu Salim. When they miss an act of obedience, not necessarily only worship, act of obedience. Are you ready? Yes? Bismillah. The pain they feel, the pain they feel, 
is more than the pain when they feel if they have lost the dearest thing to them. Wow, exactly. Exactly. First time I read this, I remember. I was like, wow. And then I start imagining the feeling of when someone loses something. Phone, phone, phone. Right? We lose the phone, what happens? Disaster. Right? Panic. It has everything. It's my life. You don't know all, all this. I was like, then somebody comes and what's in the iCloud? Okay, you just go and buy another one. No, no, you don't know, you don't know. The feeling. Is that the feeling when I miss my photo? Let alone every day? I think the message is clear. Number four. This is beautiful. How many of you have been very hungry in Ramadan? You're feeling dizzy and very dry. Ya Allah, how much left? Do you see this? Do you know this feeling? And you start counting, and you're putting the date in front of you, all right? And waiting, and Allahu Akbar is death, <laughs> right? See the feeling? That's why I wanted you to feel the feeling. They say, the person, the true heart, the pure heart, that person, long and want the act of obedience to Allah more than that hungry person wants the food. So there's two things. There's feeling of, of pain for losing, and there's pain of longing. He had these two sons that you love Allah. You long. Now remember, al true. You say, Allah, it's over time. My private interview with Allah. My uh, private talk with Allah. Then yes. Again, I said it in the beginning. It's the top. That's the goal. I'm going to share this with everybody. Don't say I can't do it. Because I am not going to do it. You know who will do it? Who will do it? I want to heal it. Allah. But why he is not yet doing it to me? He's capable, yes or no? Why he is not doing it? Because I am not serious in wanting it. It's not my priority. Is it? Is it my priority in my list? Priority? Ya Allah, make my salah the best salah today. Or let me, me deal with people around me today in the best way that pleases you. So that's number four. Number five. How many things you have to worry about today? Just give me an answer. Like you're thinking. I have to do this or this or this. Right? Some people say, oh, you don't know how many things. I thought, I can't even think of it, right? I have to go grocery, I have to do this, I have to pick up the kids, I have to clean the house, right? Qalbu Salim. Have only one thing to worry about. One. And that is? Obedience to Allah. I'm going to go for grocery. Yeah, I'm gonna, Allah is going to make it easy. I'm going to do dhikr in my way. I'm going to look at all the creation of Allah. Say, subhanAllah, alhamdulillah. Like, you don't have time, Allah will make it easy. I'm not going to find parking, Allah will make it easy. Did you see me? Did, are you with me? When you said they are always in dhikr, that's what I mean. You're always connected. You're connected with the source. And the source will make things easy. I'll give you an example how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala operates. This true story happened to me in this my last trip. SubhanAllah. So I changed my flight to another day, for whatever the reason, okay? And I normally, when I am in the plane, rarely speak with anybody. It's my downtime, I want to be with Allah, I normally next to the window, look at the creation of Allah, you know? As I was sat, there was in the front of me were family, and they were asking a young man, whatever, the only thing I heard, sure, and the young man picked up his things, and came and sat next to me. He had a beard, but he didn't say salam alaikum. So I didn't know he's a Muslim or not. Okay? Fine. So I am. Um, normally, I'm the last person to board the plane. I don't like boarding early. Don't ask me about Allah, make me board early. So I'm sitting. So people are coming, right? It's here. So people know me. So they are, you know, saying salam and everything. And the last thing, before we took off, the lady in the same line looked and says, inshallah, this is going to be a very safe, blessed trip you are with us. 
the, the, he was a younger man, 23 year old. He didn't say a word. And then he looked at me and says, are you famous? <laughs> so Anna, I'm used to this because you know, all the young people want to be influencers and want to. I said, I'm, I don't know, you can check me. <laughs> Immediately. <laughs> so, what did he ask me next? Now, this is related to what I'm gonna, what I have been sharing with you this morning. What do you think he asked me next? He said, can I ask you a question? I said, sure. What do you think the question he asked me? 23 year old college student. He said, what do you advise me? I'm drifting away from Allah. And I said, why are you drifting away? Why are you saying this? He said, because my salah is not the same as before. And I said, you are sincere. He looked at me and says, how do you know? I said, because Allah made me change my flight. Come here early. You change your seat. Brought you next to me. Made all these people come. Know me. Gave you the courage to ask me. Gave me the desire to answer. Usually I don't. The answer made you check. And the most important thing, gave you the courage to ask me the tough question. We went into detail at the end, he gave me his name. That's when you are worried about Allah. Do you see why I shared this story? It made my day. The whole trip, the whole trip, I was like, SubhanAllah, what does this young man have with you that you brought him next to me? When you are worried about Allah, He will operate to give you what you want. The problem is, it's not our priority. This man, it was his young man, because I asked him, 23, very well to do family, has everything. He was worried about Allah, and his relationship with Allah, Allah brought him next to Clear? So don't tell me how. Don't tell me it's not going to happen. Then you don't know Allah. You want it? Truly? Truly? He's going to give it to you. But wait. In the right time. Allah knows how long this young man has been struggling. I didn't ask. There was a long discussion after that. But the most important thing is what I wanted to share. The last one is time management. That's the biggest thing we all talk about these days. He or she, the person who has true heart, so worried about their time that is being wasted, not in getting him or her closer to Allah and closer to what pleases him. You look at your time, everybody, young and old, when you spend three or four or five hours on social media, then the Qalb is is has an issue. If you're telling me I'm on social media, I'm serving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in everything, then absolute. It's, it's, it's very unlike. Very unlike. 